So we're just barely discovering this. I love it. What it involves for, for most of us, you know, this is not mainstream yet. And, and hopefully this video and I encourage everybody watching to, to share this wildly with all their, the, the people around, because this has to come. We have to come to this understanding. What do you think it's going to take to take it mainstream now? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's still a long journey for it to be mainstream. Um, you know, many papers have to be written still. Um, however, I think we're on the cusp of this occurring uh, because everything is changing. You see, it's not just our social environment that's changing, but it's literally our environment, like our, um, our uh, biosphere itself is changing I mean recently I was looking at all the graphs of all the you know eruptions volcanic eruptions and earthquakes and the number of casualties due to typhoon and and hurricane and all this stuff and all these graphs shows an extreme uh, you know increase in the last 10 years you know going to acetate at this point and you know um, so there's no doubt there is a fundamental change occurring on our planet and that's driving society to find new solution and to transcend the limitation that we've established for ourselves. And so I think it's, you know, it's in the next few years we're going to see, you know, miracles uh -huh. in uh, transformation on, our, you know, in our society and in our technology, things that we can't even conceive yeah. possible will become daily usage. Yeah. For instance, you know, having a little device in your home that runs your whole house, that runs your car, that runs everything. I mean, it's it's yeah. very very uh, possible, and and it is actually on its way now. You know, how quickly will we get those? How um, how much? pain, how much suffering, how much difficulties our, our society is going to go through before we make that transition, that's all up to us, yeah. you know, it's up to you and me and the guy beside us, you know, how many, how, how, much, how willing are we to make those steps, to take the risk, to transform our, our life, you know, um, to stop doing things that are not in line with this higher knowledge, with this transition. I mean, every single person has to make those choices. And if, if people make those choices, every single person that, that make that transition is a huge impact on the whole morphogenetic field of the planet. So every single person counts. Yeah. yeah. What's fantastic is that the, 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 the universe and the field is transforming and we're receiving more and more information. That's how it feels. But it's also up to us to open ourselves. So there is this direct correlation. Is it up to us or the field? Is it, is it, how is that symbiose going to happen? Well, I think that it's both. It's always both. It's a feedback. Yeah. See, more of us open up and change our ways and and uh, transform more we feed information to the field in which the field can feed us back a reality that matches that and that's why every single person makes a difference every single person and we can create heaven on earth as Bruce Lipton says absolutely <laughs> right now <laughs> absolutely there's absolutely no reason why I mean there is I mean Buckminster Fuller in the 60s calculated that if we split the wealth equally, you know, for all people on earth, I can't remember how many millions everybody would have, you know, I, there's abundance and there is absolutely no reason for one single child to die from hunger. Right? It's just a question of organizing our society in collaboration realizing that we're all one that we're all on the same boat and that if we don't take care of each other we're just not gonna make it because na natural systems are in harmony with each other they're not in competition yeah and you know you, we saw that earlier in our evolution um, when our earth started there was monocellular system on our planet and those monocellular system were in competition with each other and they produced so much 
pollutants. And at the time, oxygen was the pollutant. They were eating um, uh, nitrogen. And if you, if you know, uh, um, at the time, if there was you know, they went almost to extinction mm -hmm. until at the last minute they started to collaborate and they made multi-cellular system that all of a sudden, you know, they were uh, able to transcend and they were able to make systems that could breed the pollutant, mm -hmm. <laughs> the oxygen. And that ended, you know, all of our you know biosphere around yeah. and so this is mm -hmm. a little bit of a transition that we're in right now yeah and it's and, and it feels like you, you've learned a lot through nature and observing nature and there is those spinning patterns that, tell us about more the, the spinning uh, theories that you have everything in the universe everything in life is spinning at all times yeah we go a little bit there yeah um, you know it's um, uh, we have to back up a little bit and um, what is the dynamic of this vacuum energy? You know, how does it work? We want to know how it works because if we understand how it works, then we can apply it better. And when you look into it, as I did, I realized that the main mechanical function of this energy is like a fluid. It's like a superfluid. And, um, and it produces vorticular vortices. So when you look at an atom, you're actually looking at a little vortex in the structure of space itself. It's like if you were in water and there was water everywhere. So you didn't know you were in water because it's everywhere. There's nowhere where there's no water. So you don't know that you're in water. And all of a sudden there was a little vortex in the water there where all the molecules in the water everywhere else is kind of random, but there it's organized, you would say, oh, there's something there. And you would think that that is separated from everything else, although it's a function of, this, of the water itself. And so I realized that, and I realized that spin is a very important component. That is, nothing comes to existence if it's not spun into existence. And you know, there it, it it links with many ancient tradition as well, where they talk about the, I mean, the whirling dervishes and and the the spin of the universe is described in many different ways. Uh, um, you know, the yin yang and all this stuff. And when you, I realized that I'm like, okay, so what are the dynamics of the spin? How does it self organize? What the, what does the vortices look like? Right, so if there is a spin, then there must be a counter spin. There must be Coriolis effects and all this. And so, in my first paper published in Physics, I I amended Einstein's equation that describes space-time by adding spin and Coriolis effect into space-time to describe this dynamic more accurately. And so, yes, uh, this fundamental spin is what is the transducer to creation from the vacuum. And so understanding it is crucial, whether we're building technology to reproduce it, mm -hmm. or whether we are in our body, you know, wanting to link with it at the deeper level, we must understand the spin structure so that we can visualize it, experience them, and go deeper into that vortex. This is, this is the rabbit hole going towards the singularity at the center of our existence, the center of the vortex, where stillness is present, you see? Yeah. We, and that... Um, that's what we're all doing right now. That's right, that's right. We're, we're discovering that, we're going deeper into ourselves, finding that center, that singularity, that stillness that all these great masters talked about yeah. and um, you know and so s deeper you go into that stillness faster the vorticular dynamics of your existence increase mm -hmm. because you can handle it since you're in the center you're in stillness and so you become more and more powerful you start to have a larger and larger influence on the on the you know uh, bioelectric field and of your body and on the morphogenetic field of the whole planet and that's why it's not i get that question often like how many people will it 
take to you know get the morphogenic field to yeah. go to the next level and it's not a linear equation it's not s simple because some people will have more influence than others and uh, so it's a little more complex than that. I think it could be calculated, but I haven't done that yet. And you do feel it's going to happen within the next few years? Absolutely. I, it, you know, in the next few years, we will either transcend or auto-destruct. Uh, because nature does not sustain a disharmony uh, and uh, systems that are not uh, conducive to expansion. Um, systems that are, um, you know, uh, destructive in nature self-destruct. Um, this is a very simple feedback structure of the universe. You know, you feed it destruction, it will feed back destruction. Um, so, you know, are we going to be able to collaborate? Are we going to be able to become one humanity? you know, striving for the universe? Are we going to be able to accept abundance in our world without attachments to, you know, um, wealth and good and so, you know, because wealth is infinite for all beings. There's no reason for segregation of wealth. There's no borders. There's no end. Yeah. There's infinite amount of goods in the universe and there's an infinite amount of energy as I'm proving in my equations. There, and we have the capacity to have access to all this. It's just a question, are we going to be abundant in our own consciousness? Oh, and, and abundance in our own consciousness is knowing that there is infinite amount of abundance and I don't need to withhold abundance from my neighbor, from my friend, from my family, from my, you know, from this country over there, um, that like there's solutions that um, where everyone gain, everybody is taken care of and no child um, should suffer and, and, and starve ever again. Thank you, Nassim, for this delicious, juicy conversation that I'm excited to, to share and that I'm sure many people will be excited to share. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your dedication and your work and your, your abundance, pa abundant passion itself. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. And keep doing what you're doing. We need people to know out there.